Welcome to Haines, Alaska. This is the third stop in port on this seven night cruise from Seward, Alaska to Vancouver, Canada. Until I booked this cruise, I don't remember ever hearing about Haines before, so I was excited to check it out. The ship sailed to Haines from Skagway, which is an awesome stop that featured a ride on the White Pass and Yukon Route Railway. Check out my video of that beautiful ride by clicking the link in the description below. The cruise from Skagway to Haines took a little over an hour, and once there, passengers were given about four hours to explore the city or take one of the few excursions. When you get off the ship, you'll walk down the long dock, which offers a gorgeous view of Haines Harbor on the Chilkat Inlet. And if you look to the right, you'll see a beautiful marina. And beyond that is Main Street in the city of Haines. It's only about a half mile from the end of the dock and there are free shuttles that depart about every 15 minutes. When I got there, a lot of people were in line waiting, so I decided to take a walk. This is also the place where you catch the buses for your excursions. They have restrooms here and free maps and information are also available. Now, if you're walking and take a left at the end of the dock, you can walk to Portage Cove State Park in about 15 minutes. Now, I didn't go this way, but I've heard once you get there, you can have some beautiful views of the Chilkat Inlet and maybe see some bald eagles. Another walk you can take is to go straight from the end of the dock and walk about 30 minutes, a little over a mile, till the Chilkat River walking trails. Though it was a cloudy day, I saw some amazing views of the surrounding snow-capped mountains. Since I only had about three and a half hours once I got off the ship, I decided to go straight up the hill and take a look at Fort Seward and then make my way downtown from there. On my way up the hill, which was uh, Portage Street, I came across a, a salmon shop, a restaurant, a wild iris jewelry store, a bicycle rental place, and an art store. And there was also some really cool properties here. And this sign caught my attention. I, I've tried to look it up on Google and I can't figure it out what it is. So it's there and it's cool and it's local. I like it. If you happen to have any info, please comment below. I love comments. Also a lot of interesting properties. And some of them have been here for a long time apparently. This, I guess it's a painting or a tile work. Shows a Captain James Fornis in the early 1900s. Must have been his house. Fort Seward, I don't think, ever had a fence around it. But there are some remnants of barracks and other buildings that are there. And some of the big houses are still there. Apparently, they're all privately owned now. According to the National Park Service, Fort Seward was built in 1904 to impose order on the unruly mob of gold seekers heading north while also providing a military presence in Alaska during boundary disputes that were ongoing with Canada. Fort William H. Seward was the last of 12 Gold Rush era military posts built in Alaska, and it was decommissioned in 1947. I just enjoyed looking at a lot of the remnants and some of the cool sites like that bench that had a saying on it that says, what's normal for the spider is chaos for the fly. Look at that beautiful totem pole. And there's the old field kitchen. But there were a lot of meals served there. I wonder if their breakfasts were as good as the ones I had in the Air Force, especially during Midnight Chow. At first I thought someone was staring at me through the window when I looked at this building. Looks like it must be an old uh, theater or something. Maybe it was a headquarters before, but it looks like maybe it's a theater now. Pretty cool. I got a feeling that these beautiful big homes here must have been the officers' quarters. Still got a nice flag there and looks like there's a memorial and some people checking it out. Now these big buildings on the corner here, I think there's three of them together, are part of the Halsingland Hotel. There's a restaurant there that was closed this season, but apparently there's an Avis car rental there too. So if you need a rental car, that's the place to go. Now this tall building is the old firehouse. It's also a jail and a guardhouse which is adjacent to the building. Now it's a hotel. I've seen some mixed reviews on it, but last year when I saw it on a video, it was for sale. So I'm sure they have new owners and they're 
figuring things out and it's going to be amazing in the future. What a nice view of the ship. Now the big tower on the firehouse was so they could hang their hoses and ropes, let them dry out. And there's the American Bald Eagle Museum. And there's the firemen practicing at the new firehouse. And look at that beautiful view of the mountain. I love this city. Continuing downtown, I came across the Haynes, Alaska Visitor Center. Nice big bear in the front. Be alert. Now, unlike a lot of places I noticed in Haynes that were open when the ship was in town, the visitor center appeared to be closed. I'm sure I'll be back here again. And if it's open then, I'll go in there and I'll get some information from the information center and pass it on. One tidbit of information I do have is the Walt Disney movie White Fang was filmed here. I have to watch it. It was looking like a nice town. It had soccer fields and beautiful views of snow-capped mountains and beautiful art on a lot of buildings that I enjoy seeing every city I go. Let's head down Main Street. Hey, there's the Haynes Brewery. Looks like they stayed open for the ship. So let's go in and grab a pint or two. The beer was excellent and they even had a beer garden outside where you could sit at picnic tables and enjoy the views. A lot of benches had carvings on them. This one said, I don't need to calm down. I need to calm up. <laughs> it looks like some of the homes on Main Street had some of their own beer garden ideas. Look at that. It looks like a fireplace. Very nice. They sure love their salmon in Alaska. I do too. Hey, and I could go buy some over there at the IGA. Seeing what else is around Haynes, I saw Alaska Rods. That looked like a fishing or tackle store and bakery and drugstore all in one. Welcome to the Fog Cut kind of Bar. This was my kind of bar. It was cool, had great music. Had a beer gotten out back, which no one was using. But uh, they had pizza and great beer. And pool tables and a jukebox. It was awesome. And apparently, pretty famous. I wasn't the only one taking pictures in this place. I'll be back there again. Look, it's for sale. Hmm. I really loved walking downtown Haynes. It reminded me of the Old West, the way the buildings are styled. Very nice. And look at that. Another view of the radiance of the seas. And this is my highlight for Haynes. The Hammer Museum. I think it's the only Hammer Museum in the world. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. I've seen videos on YouTube, so I kind of knew what was in there. But once I saw this bike, I had to go in. Besides, where else are you going to get hammered for seven bucks? I didn't make that up. It says it on the sign when you go in. It's even a better deal if you're active or retired military. You can get it for six dollars. Thank you, Hammer Museum. And they did have a guy that was giving tours. And I kept listening in. And there was a lot of cool information here. Let's see. What else do we got over here? Cobbling hammers. Nowadays, of course, we're used to all our shoes being made in sweatshops in Indonesia. But it used to be you had a shoemaker and you had a cobbler to keep that shoe on your foot. It was leather. It probably lasted you for years and years and years. If you took it to this job, that could be things on the hammer. No. Like this slender glass, no, no, water for crystals. These were created oh, simply because the artist stood and they wanted you to be able to enjoy it. So I really love this display right here. Over here is what I call the light and dark corner. The light side of things, we have our musical hammers. People don't tend to think of hammers as musical instruments, but they are. Think about it. A hammer from an upright piano. What can you do with that? Mozart, Brahms, beautiful works of art. African drum hammers, Russian golf. And uh, we actually had a little bit of a kerfuffle with the Canadians uh, at the very end of the 1800s. We weren't sure where the border was between us and them. So we, as one does, set up machine guns around our exercise, what we thought was ours, and they did the same. Luckily, uh, it never came to violence, but. Look at these two sculptures. I thought they were beautiful. You'll enjoy the Hammy Museum. I especially like the sporting hammers, especially the ones for golf. Maybe that putter hammer will help my golf game. If anything could help it. Hey, look at that. A Tim the Tool Man hammer from Tool Time. Love it. Have you ever seen so many hammers? I'm not going to spoil it all for you, but go check it out. It's worth the seven bucks. Uh, that is the nerdiest, worthless door camera I've ever seen in my life. What could you possibly use this for? Well, for the first time, and I think the only time in my life, I was wrong. 
This is used, has been used, and is used to this day to save lives. Train hitting the wheels on your train and listening to the sound. You're checking for warps, you're checking for cracks, because if that happens, your train is going off the tracks and you're gonna die. So you see them walking up and down. Ting, ting, everyone lives. Tunk, everyone dies. Get that wheel replaced as soon as possible. There's some more beautiful views of the mountains. And the ship. And then there's the cultural center. They stayed open for the ship passengers. I didn't get in there though. Time to head back. There's the Three Northmen. It's for sale too. Wow. It sells mead and cider. According to uh, a lot of YouTube videos I've seen, it's fantastic. A lot of bars here, a lot of restaurants. There's the lighthouse restaurant Hababa. I walked in, it looked really nice. But it was getting late, a lot of people were heading back to the ship. But the Bear Den gift shop was open. People are going to get those last minute gifts. Look at this guy. I wonder if he's waiting for his wife. So I walked past the marina on the way to the ship. A lot of beautiful boats here. Coming up is a sign for the Harbor Master's office. And I found it interesting in the newspaper that it says they're trying to change the name back to Deshu. I don't blame them. A lot of cities in Alaska are going back to the Tlingit names. Right, look at this eagle. I saw this eagle swooping in. Then I adjusted my camera, trying to make sure I get a picture of him if he decided to land. And I was so amazed by what he was doing. I didn't catch him picking up this fish, but I saw it. I just didn't get it on the camera. It's so beautiful too, isn't it? Sure. Well, since I'd never seen that before, I guess it's a good excuse that I took my eyes off the camera, but I won't do it next time. Continuing on, I saw this cool park and there was uh, a bunch of locals having a barbecue. Very nice town. And I love all the art and all the displays they have. This was a driller that was used during the gold rush to help drill for gold. This was uh, Clinkett Park and there's an old cemetery there that had some very old gravestones and I think the oldest person that I saw on the stones was 53 years old. A lot of hard living conditions. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed my walk around Haynes and there's some beautiful views of the ship here. And I should have mentioned at the beginning that if you go to the end of the dock and take a right, you can walk to downtown Haynes in about 15 minutes. It's only about a half a mile. Well, I hope you liked this video and hit that like and subscribe button. And remember, it is a wonderful world. We'll see you next time. Blueberry